Welcome to Freedom Briefs. I, this is brought to you by the American Security Council Foundation. I am your host, Joy Botrebeck. I have been the host of Protecting Our Freedoms podcast, which we will continue. Um, but right now, for this new year, we are going to try some Freedom Briefs and hopefully get some little 10-minute briefs on uh, national security, economic security, and moral leadership. And back with me today is Senior Fellow Alan Dowd. Alan, welcome back. Good to be back as always, Joy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. And as we have this new year, we are going to try the briefs. Like I said, I also have new glasses because apparently my eyesight is getting worse. So <laughs> in order to read what I'm writing here. That's another sign of the passing of a year. Usually, so. <laughs> exactly. Um, please subscribe to our channel, um, both on Rumble and YouTube. You can type in the American Security Council Foundation and follow us on Facebook. You can also read Alan's article, which we will be diving into here from November uh, 21st Century Missile Crisis on our website at www.ascf.us. Alan, your article was excellent, and um, you're talking a lot of stuff that's going on currently. Uh, heard this morning that the U.S. is um, training the Ukraine on Patriot missile systems and how to right. use them. Right, very timely uh, topic, and uh, it's becoming more and more uh, part of the key, a key part of basic security of the free world is missile defense. Yes, and and as you mentioned in your article, we have we have several tyrannical regimes that have these capabilities, um, specifically uh, Russia and Iran supporting them, and North Korea and China. And I think what really alarmed me the most from your article was these hypersonic missiles and then the mobility that both North, North Korea and Iran have uh, to move their long-range missiles. So can you just right. brief us a little on the precision of both the hypersonic missiles and the mobile launch pads? Well, the hypersonic missile is, uh, is, is the biggest concern about is not so much its accuracy, though the, the, the accuracy of of these new hypersonics is is very good. Uh, ICBM, uh, the other another main delivery system, or short range ballistic missiles or medium range, uh, generally uh, are not going to need to be as accurate because their warheads generally, uh, you know, uh, are are nuclear, so you don't need the accuracy. Whereas a lot of hypersonic, the the idea of hypersonics is you're hitting the target so hard with such a uh, a pay, uh, with, with so much speed that you're destroying the target just through uh, sheer uh, force, you know. Uh, mm. But the bigger concern, I think, you know, and neither you nor I, uh, and there probably are some in the uh, in the listening audience, but I'm no uh, physicist. I am not a rocket scientist. This is rocket science. <laughs> but the big concern from a public policy and international security standpoint of hypersonics uh, the biggest worry is not so much uh, the speed because ICBMs travel fast, you know, 3,500, 4,000 miles an hour. Wow. Uh, uh, and hypersonics can travel faster for sure. But it, the, the bigger concern from what I understand is that hypersonics travel within the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, they're mm -hmm. fired and uh, launched, and then they also have this in-flight maneuverability. Uh, and so they're traveling under the Earth's atmosphere, moving very quickly, uh, and they're not following a normal, you've heard the term, and we've all seen kind of the depictions of an ICBM. It goes outside the atmosphere in kind of a parabolic, very much a parabolic fashion in a predictable uh, fashion. It goes up the outside of the atmosphere and then it comes down uh, through the atmosphere. So it can be tracked more easily than these things that are mm -hmm. flying, just skimming across, you know, uh, the sky at very high speed, launched from a, a, a bomber or a fighter bomber and uh, hitting their target, maneuvering mid-flight, makes them harder to track uh, than an ICBM. Uh, and this will make hypersonic missiles more difficult to intercept by missile defenses, too, uh, unlike mm -hmm. uh, ICBMs or, or, or slow-moving uh, uh, standoff weapons like our Tomahawk uh, missile, which is slow-moving but, but accurate, uh, or drones, which are being targeted by uh, mm -hmm. missile defenses, too, especially in Ukraine and places like Yemen or Saudi Arabia, and the uh, these the drones. That's another um, current, very current topic, especially in the Ukraine right now. 
the Patriot missile system, as I was discussing earlier and um, heard this morning, are they able to intercept those drones pretty accurately? Yes, sure. You know, Patriot was initially designed as a uh, a, a fairly small uh, diameter uh, base defense, uh, air defense for a kind of a, a base, the footprint of a base or a small unit. Uh, and it's been modified and improved over the decades. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so, yes, they can, they were initially designed to take out, uh, mostly planes and then they've been improved, beefed up, uh, made smarter, um, uh, and they can hit planes, drones, or missiles. Uh, of course they became, we all started to learn about Patriots during the Gulf War of 1991, Desert Storm, and, and the system's been improved quite a bit since then. Mm. And is the that they're an, the they're, an a, they're an a defense they're an air defense uh, uh, system and they do including in that air defense is missile defense. Okay. And the that what's the difference between that and the THAAD system? Uh, the THAAD is uh, THAAD stands for uh, terminal high altitude air defense. So uh, terminal stands for at the end, uh, very much at the end of the of trajectory or the flight of the of the threat and uh patriot usually is near the end too by the way but okay. uh so the, the thad is uh, uh highly accurate a lot more from what i understand sophisticated a lot more money than a, than expensive than a patriot uh, system uh there are a lot fewer thads for that reason patriots are pretty much uh ubiquitous in some regards in, in uh, among the United States and its closest allies, uh, and uh, where American bases are, they're often are patriots. But FADs are, are much more expensive and much more, uh, from what I understand, uh, accurate there at the end of the of the uh, of the missile of the of the threat, uh, the inbound threat trajectory. Yes, from your article, and, I, I was very impressed the, with the accuracy of the FAD system. Yeah, yeah they, uh, the, you know. Uh, the THAAD is, uh, it's, there, there's, a, there's a THAAD system in, in South Korea. There are THAAD batteries um, in the UAE. Uh, I know that some mobile THAAD systems, uh, and the THAAD, all, all THAADs are mobile. They've okay. been moved around from Guam to Israel to Japan at times. Uh, and I know the Saudis want to, uh, to deploy a, a THAAD system. So they are, uh, they're very, uh, that's a, they're they're much more, uh, from what I understand, uh, in, in, they're certainly in high demand. But the United States doesn't spread those around, as, to use a layman's term, as, as easily or as, as quickly as it, it does uh, uh, the Patriot system. Especially if they they're quite expensive, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. And going back to your point with the the training with the Patriots, you know, all these systems are require quite a bit of training they they're networked to radars and sensors and satellites um, and so that training like that the Ukrainian military is getting uh, on the Patriot system uh, I think they're getting that in Oklahoma uh, and maybe some of some might be trained over in, in NATO bases in Europe but I that that training is very important I, I don't think it's just a, a simple as, uh, as just push a button to it sounds like it's, these are you take some time to learn how mm -hmm. to use them effectively and not waste the system too. And, and with what you were saying there, uh, using the um, satellite technology, not, not to get too off topic here, but are they still, or have you heard anything more about? Are they still using the Starlink system in Ukraine? Yes, the, uh, the Ukrainians are. It's uh, uh, it's basically it was, and it still remains. It, it's been crucial to their uh not just their military success but their uh citizens to be able to communicate with each other uh the, the military has relied on starlink as well as the what remains of the commercial sector and the civilian sector i don't know how many uh have been sent i know that the uh musk company the musk company has mm -hmm. donated some and I, I know that that's a cost to them and i think the, the u.s government is worked with uh, Musk company to try to underwrite some of that because it is a, a it was a something that they gave initially yes I heard uh, that. there's a cost to it but it, it's been essential from what I understand in in keeping their military uh, uh, 
effective and connected and networked in a way that you, you need to be in, in, in the mo modern battlefield. Excellent. Well, I know these are little briefs, so I just wanted to ask you another little question I had of, of these regimes, yeah. uh, Iran and Russia together, yeah. I guess you could really say, uh, North Korea and China. Who do you think mm -hmm. poses the most danger currently to the U.S.? Well, it's a, it's a very interesting but a tough question uh, mm. because these four enemy regimes represent different kinds of threats. So Russia, P, uh, PRC, North Korea, and Iran. Uh, two are in what I'd call the uh, uh, high destruction but not existential threat category. That'd be Iran and uh, North Korea. Uh, Iran may have the least mature missile capabilities of these four, uh, but it also may be the most fanatical mm. and the most unpredictable. So that's a... It's a different kind of threat, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, North Korea is a close second on fanaticism, probably, <laughs> but far more mature missile capability than Iran. Plus, North Korea is a known nuclear power, 40 mm -hmm. nuclear weapons, maybe more. Uh, uh, so both these countries, I would submit, fall into uh, high destruction, not existential, but less deterrable uh, because of that, that kind of wild card of fanaticism that both of them have one. Um, you know, a, a fanatical uh, revolutionary regime uh, with the, the, the version of Shiite Islam that Iran mm -hmm. uh, embraces, at least its regime, and then North Korea uh, uh, fanatical in, in a different way mm -hmm. uh, and, and unpredictable in many ways, as we've seen over the last 70 years. Uh, yes. As to the other two, those two are existential threats. Those have, those have the capacity both the PRC and the Russian Federation with uh, their arsenals and with full spectrum capabilities to threaten the very existence of the United States. So that's, those two are, are very different. However, they're deterrable. Uh, they, mm. they, I, I would submit that we've seen evidence of that even in the last few years. Both of those countries have been deterred by American power and, the, and, the, and what American power represents. Russia has thousands of nuclear warheads, about 6,200. China has hundreds, about 350, and, and is adding hundreds more, uh, we know. So, uh, but, but those countries, more deterrable, not fanatical. Uh, Russia may be in a, uh, governed uh, right now by a, uh, a kind of a, I heard somebody call it uh, a rabid uh, kind of uh, government, but I wouldn't say it's fanatical. Uh, so right. that's why I yeah. break those down. That's a hard question. You ask good, hard questions, uh, <laughs> Joy. Well, I had to think about those, it myself, too, and I agree with you on that. that that's how we'd break them down. Uh, and I wouldn't uh, downplay any of the four of them. They, but they mm -hmm. all require different kinds of, uh, kinds of responses and different kinds of alliances and different kinds of uh, deterrence. And speaking of alliances and deterrence, we are going to continue uh, Alan's next brief. So join us again next time on Freedom Briefs as we discuss his next article in December. Thank you, Alan, for coming on today. Sounds good. See you next time. All right. Thank you.